Strike him out! Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk him up. Chris Taylor. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Daniel Starkin. Not a uh, The Dodgers sweep the Giants, and this is about as depressed as you'll ever find me after a four-game sweep of the Giants, because the breaking news that came out of today's game was that Clayton Kershaw exits the game after four innings with what is described as lower back pain. This is what he said. He said he felt it lock up. Saw a doctor, but won't know more until tomorrow. Um, he'll find out tomorrow basically how he feels on the severity of it. Didn't want to compare it to earlier. But Daniel, when you look at his injury history, the back is pretty much worst case scenario earlier this year in May. He had a pelvis slash back injury October of, excuse me, July and October of last year. He missed time with a back injury June of 2018. He had a lower back strain. Not great if you're the Dodgers to be comfortably in first place, but... With Kershaw having missed out on the playoffs with a back injury a year ago, this is pretty worrying, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll disagree slightly with this being worst case scenario, like an arm injury or an elbow injury, which that's actually what he missed the playoffs with last year. That is worst case scenario. But yeah, I mean, like you said, he's been through so many back issues before and, you know, he's only getting older. So I, I feel like at this point, like every time he takes the mound, there's like a slight fear, like you know, at this point, just because it's happened so many times. So it's unfortunate um, timing wise, you know, I guess, it's, you know, I, the bright side is it's only August 4th right now. Yeah. Like it's not September 4th or October 4th. So that still gives him a window to get healthy. But let, let you know, like he said, post game, you know, not really too sure of the severity right now. Um, and, and back issues are tricky. Like it's not like there's a whole lot you could do to heal it other than just resting so yeah. we'll see how he feels tomorrow but yeah not definitely not ideal um especially after the trade deadline has already passed and, and the dodgers didn't go out and get a starter that you know so many people wanted yeah absolutely uh if you weren't watching the game kershaw comes back out to throw his warm-ups in the fifth inning then signals over to the bench saying hey let me try one more he throws one more it does not go well uh, Dave Roberts said after the game, he said Kershaw not fighting to stay in was, quote, somewhat telling, which yep. I thought that was sort of, you know, a key moment. I, look, I don't want to overreact to body language. I don't watch every single one of Dave Roberts' <laughs> postgame press conferences. He did not seem like a happy guy. He, yep. he seemed concerned. He seemed worried. Um, so we'll have to see. But, but that brings us to the storyline which you brought up, which is what do the Dodgers do from here? The Dodgers had an abundance of starting pitching as far as quantity. We could argue about whether or not they had the quality that they needed, but they definitely had quantity. Well, what they did was they dealt away from that quantity in Mitch White, who was a guy who was making serious starts and pitching fairly well for them. And then today they lose Clayton Kershaw. And so now you're looking at a group that features Urias, who's peaking at the right time. Anderson, who has been consistently good. Gonsolin, who's been in a rough patch, but overall in the season has been good. Andrew Heaney's made two starts since coming back. He's thrown eight innings, allowing just five hits, one earned run, striking out 11, but still on a very tight pitch count. Dustin May has been dominant in the minor leagues, but he still needs two more starts as the report, so he's probably about two weeks away. You start doing the math, they've got four guys who are healthy now if Kershaw is out. The fourth is on an incredibly low pitch count. The fifth is due back in about two weeks, having missed the entirety of this season and last season. And then you've got Walker Bueller, who's still months away. Obviously, Ryan Pepio, Michael Grove in the mix. But what do you make of that group, a group that seemed to be a position of depth and strength a week ago, and now it's starting to fall into some questionable territory? Yeah, I mean, I, I got to be honest, I'm not overly concerned just because of how big the division lead is. Like, if this was yeah. August 4th of last year, I think that's a completely different story when you're in a close division race and you need to win every game. But this season, it's, it's it's you know, it's like apples to oranges. They're up 12, 12 and a half games, whatever the division lead is. So it's not like you need to necessarily go out and win every single game, even though they pretty much are, like, regardless of who's on the mound. Like, this team is rolling right now, and I, I don't expect, you know, Kershaw getting hurt to change that. I've, some, I've seen some people tweeting, like, this is why you don't trade, you know, Mitch White. Um, and I, I, I disagree with that. Like, I think just for everything I laid out, like, with, with how big the division lead is, like you could throw out Ryan Pepio and Michael Grove out there for a few starts. And realistically, like the production is not going to yep. be a whole lot different than when you were getting from Mitch White. And also, like you mentioned, Dustin May is on his way back. He just threw well in a rehab start yesterday. 
Dave Roberts said before today's game that he's probably going to make two rehab starts. He's only he's only built up to about four innings right now. I'll be curious to see if like they change that and maybe just yeah. say, you know, whatever, like Kershaw's down now. We're just going to call May up, even if he could only give us four innings at the big league level. Um, so, so I'll be interesting to see if they do that. But if not, if they stick with their plan with May, which makes all the sense in the world, just because he's coming back from a very serious injury, yeah. Tommy surgery, and you don't you don't really want to mess around with that and risk him getting injured again. Um, so if, if that's the case, if May's not back for another two weeks or whatever, I think you could give Ryan Pepio a spot start or, or two um, and then go from there. I mean, we'll see how long Kershaw's out. But, you know, he, he, he injured the back earlier in the season and he missed about a month. I would yeah. assume it's probably going to be that or even longer this time. Like, you know, with a pack, you got to you gotta get completely healthy before you could start, you know, ramping back up again. And then there's a ramp up period. So it's not like, I mean, unless he wakes up tomorrow feeling great, which that'd be, you know, that'd be awesome. But I don't think anyone's necessarily expecting that. So the expectation is he's going to miss a few weeks. And I think the Dodgers will be able to get by fine from that. It's just a question of, is he going to make it back? Is Walker yeah. Buehler going to make it back? Like, we're... The, the question mark is in the postseason, not really the regular season. Yeah, and you make the point of now you're in this game of, okay, he's got to take a certain amount of time off, but then he needs a certain amount of time before the postseason yeah. to get built back up. And so you might be able to say, ah, two months, we're fine. Well, if he sits out a month, it's going to take him a few weeks to get built back up. So we'll see how they decide to shake that out. But I am glad you said what you did about Mitch White because I agree with you. They dealt Mitch White. People are going to freak out about it. Is there really a difference between Mitch White and Ryan Pepio, Michael Grove, a guy we haven't seen this year, and Andre Jackson, who looked good last season at times? I don't think there. I mean, not a man. Neg, it's a negligible difference. And so, if you can go and get assets for Mitch White and just have Ryan Pepio or Grove or Jackson come in and start, then you do it, and you don't even think twice about it, and you'll be fine. Because again, Mitch White was never going to make postseason starts. The Dodgers track for the first uh, seed in the NL is not in jeopardy. Their NL West title is not in jeopardy. They'll be fine. So I'm glad that uh, that we, we got that one out of the way. While we're talking about this game real quick, there was one other major storyline that came out uh, towards the end of the game. Dod uh, excuse me, Giants relief pitcher Harleen Gar Garcia um, strikes out James Outman and decides to do the Dodgers hitting celebration while pointing at Mookie Betts, who was on deck. They went back, uh, Joe Davis said, afterwards. He did the same thing, actually, to Cody Bellinger after striking out Bellinger. Very bizarre. Uh, Mookie Betts starts walking towards him and saying, come on. They have video of Mookie in the dugout saying, I didn't do blank. I don't know what he's talking about. Just weird. And then Kapler, like, absolutely goes ballistic. <laughs> I have no... What, did, what was Kapler mad about? Unless Garcia got ejected, which they didn't say happened. I think both teams got warned, so the Giants yeah. weren't disadvantaged. It just overall incredibly bizarre situation. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's what happens when you lose to your biggest rival <laughs> seven times in a row and on the verge of losing to them an eighth time and, and yeah. you're about to, you know, be under five hundred after you know, a year, a year after winning 107 games or whatever it was, I think a few, a few like beat writers tweeted after the game, the Giants already have as many losses this season as they had all of last year, yeah. and there's still two months to go. So, I'm gonna guess it's just frustration, you know, building up on their part, which I understand. But at the end yeah. of the day, that was just ridiculous. Like Mookie Betts of all people, yeah. like that guy doesn't even want to hurt a fly. Like he he wants, yeah. he doesn't want to, you know, any trouble. He just wants to go there, hit his bombs make his diving catches in right field, throw guys out, and then, you know, go home to his family. So that, that was weird. I know, I mean, Mookie did hit uh, the three-run homer in the eighth inning off Garcia in the in the series back in L.A., that game-winning homer he hit. Um, so maybe he was remembering that. But it, it was weird, like, for him, for Garcia to point at Mookie, who's on, in the on-deck circle after striking yeah. out Outman, um, was just weird. And then, like you said, with Kapler, I don't know what he was – if he was, if he should be mad at anyone, it should be his pitcher on the mound who was mocking yeah. the Dodgers while losing and on the verge of getting swept while being behind 21 games in the standing. So, yeah, that was really weird. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm glad we could laugh about it. It was funny. Trey comes up the next inning, hits a homer, and then you see all, you know, <laughs> the, the whole bench dugout is doing the sign. So I thought that was great. Yeah, just just <laughs> as you said, Mookie's the wrong guy. And and again, a couple people pointed to the Mookie home run, but it was weird because he did it against Bellinger earlier in the inning, reportedly. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows? Just bizarre. Um, but hey, 
The Dodgers win. That's the good news. Obviously, Clayton Kershaw's injury to be determined. Hey, we appreciate you joining us. As always, this has been Dodger Heads presented by DodgerBlue.com. That's Daniel Starkin. My name is Jeff Spiegel. Please subscribe. Ring the notification bell here. Uh, check out DodgerBlue.com. DodgerBlue1958 everywhere on social media. We'll see you next time.